Welcome guys. Hope you are doing well today. Sitcha Talks again today. My name is Vincent. And today we are going to talk about something very important about ourselves. Especially we are going to talk about matters men's health. From your DMs, I have uh, seen that uh, you know, most of the things you have dealt with are uh, ladies related. But men, you are not left behind. So, so today we want to discuss on uh, men itself. Kindly guys, if you have not subscribed to our channel, the channel Sucha Talks, and I want to encourage you uh, to subscribe to our channel because that is the best way in which you can always uh, support us. Uh, the channel Sucha Talks, and for any support, there is a PayPal account there where you can always give uh, your support and also give uh, your best of your suggestions so now best we can uh, deal with uh, our channel and also to make it more interesting uh, this is what i call gooseberries for those who have not watched us uh, it is summer off season this time around but uh, it is uh, just uh, this green component of it showing that it is uh, it's blooming so that uh, it gets to prepare itself uh, for for the same. These are our trees, yeah, they beautify our environment and also, like we say, it gives us oxygen and also to detoxify the air with uh, carbon, uh, carbon dioxide. So guys, welcome to the channel Suture Talks and I want to welcome in a special way. I'm introducing a very interesting topic. Uh, today we are going to talk about uh, the only component which is found in men. And uh, who can guess what it means? It is, yes, uh, it is about uh, the prostate. Prostate, very important uh, in men. And I'm going to talk about uh, the function of the prostate. We're going to find out if uh, who has it. Because men, I've, say, I've talked about men, what is the, what does it do in the body and also its role in the body. And when uh, and I'm going to talk about uh, prostate en enlargement, when it enlarges, what happens to you or what happens to the body and also uh, how it's supposed to be handled. Is it a problem in your community? Let me know in the comment section or in the DM how these uh, prostate is handled in your community and how all, all, all it's handled in your country and the best way to how you handle it and is it a big problem in your country i can say categorically in africa it's a big problem with men especially men of uh, 50 uh, for up to 40 to to 60 years it's a big problem for them and we're going to find out why that age and why men and how the best approach we can give uh, for it. As much as the process is found in a, ma a man, it doesn't mean only men should handle it. Ladies also have a very big role in this, especially those who are couples, who are lovers to these guys. There's a, a special support which these guys can need, in which uh, they need to be helped. So guys, I want to welcome you to our channel. Kindly uh, keep watching. The prostate is a gland in the male reproductive uh, system that produces a seminal fluid which helps in to nourish uh, and to transport uh, sperms. So it is located just below the bladder and the bladder is where our urine gets uh, stored. And uh, the issues uh, because of the location of the prostate, we say it is between the bladder and the urethra and the problems most of the time which affect the health of a person uh, are related to the bladder and also the urethra when the prostate has a problem in men so <clears throat> uh, prostate health is important and uh, the issue like prostate enlargement that's what you call bph or benign prostate hyperplasia uh, or a prostate cancer can affect men uh, as they age so age is a factor which affects the prostate in which uh, men are most of the time are affected. Guys, welcome to our video. My name is Vincent, the channel is Sator Talks and kindly if you have not subscribed, I want to encourage you to subscribe to, to our channel. 
And today, from our introduction, we're going to talk about the prostate, which is a very important pro uh, component in the men's health or in the men's body. And uh, this is where we get to uh, educate ourselves on what uh, the relationship of the prostate and also production, reproduction. Like from what I've explained, uh, it is uh, the prostate is only found in the male uh, sexual or male, male's body, just uh, below uh, the, just located below the bladder and surround the urethra. So with the coming up of the issues of the prostate, it affects the way one gets to void or get out of the urine and also in other matters which we're going to look at. So when we talk about the enlargement of the prostate, an enlargement of the prostate uh, is uh, also known as benign prostate uh, hyperplasia, commonly called uh, PPH. I think you've ever heard of PPH which is a common condition that occurs as the men age. You find that when, as men, when we, as we grow old, our prostate is likely to increase in size and uh, to give, uh, so that it gives us problems with the uh, urination and also on matters reproduction. So uh, it is, uh, the prostate most of the time is affected by the age uh, factor which can cause the, the prostate to press the urethra and the bladder because of the location and also which can lead to urinary problems uh, most of the time. So uh, we have several symptoms of enlarged uh, uh, prostate, which can include uh, like uh, frequent urination where one gets to urinate uh, many times more than normal. So such kind of you find that you are uh, you are you are waiting like once or thrice in once or thrice in a day you find out the the the, the increase of uh, that kind of uh, frequency of uh, urination so difficulty and the starting and the stopping of urination you find that you are that at that particular time when the prostate has a problem one is not able to stop the urine I remember when we were young boys and uh, we could line up, especially when we were in primary school, and find out who can urinate at a very further distance, uh, who, who can, who can uh, urinate at the farthest distance. I think if you are a boy, you understand this. If you underwent this age, men, I think you understand. Ladies cannot understand this thing. But uh, as boys, we used to line up and then see who can avoid the farthest end. Uh, but uh, when you reach 50 years, men, I want to challenge you that you call your your age, age mates and also try to do it and see who can win that uh, that game uh, and see the difference between them and now when you are 50 years old. So also we have signs like weak flow of your of your of urine. So it's one of the things also which can be uh, can be seen there. So for the enlargement of the of the of the prostate, there are very many very many options which can are given about uh, the management over the same. We are going to look at it also. But when you have, uh, it's always good to as men we get to see our healthcare providers to give check on our prostate and also find find out our uh, bladder health and also how we are doing in matters uh, our prostate uh, is uh, is doing. So I'm going to mention some of the signs and symptoms of this uh, of this uh, uh, prostate enlargement. Number one is frequent urination, as I've mentioned. They need to urinate more than usual, especially at night. And this problem of frequent urination most of the time is nocturnal. Uh, in in, uh, in in science, we call it nocturia where you get that uh, if you are urinating once at night, you find it increases in the frequency at night. And the reason of the increase in the frequency is obvious because I've told you the prostate is located between the bladder and the urethra. So it, uh, sometimes when you, you, you urinate, with, when there's a hyperplasia or the, the increase in size of this uh, prostate, 
so you get that uh, the there is uh, you can't void all the urine out the urine, the urine from the bladder cannot uh, only be emptied at that particular time at once so sometimes you are not able to clear your bladder that's why the frequency now increases of urination or what you call nocturia also what you call urgency uh, you have this uh, when you talk about urgencies as about sudden strong urge uh, to urinate where one gets uh, uh, that strong urge to urinate where one cannot even hold so uh, you, it's one of the signs of this uh, pph thing also weak urine stream like i've told you when we were young boys we could compete on the on the field there and see who can urinate the farthest end but here we have weak urine stream so at that particular age where I've told you at 50 years you can you want to compete, you will find that that distance which you used to do it at uh, that age of maybe 10, 14 years, or even 8 years, you can't reach where you used to do that because of the changes which have taken up on your prostate. Also, intermittent stream, urine flow that starts and stops. So because of uh, the effects on the urethra and also the bladder, you find out that there is that intermittent stream where you urinate, it stops and also starts to drip out. So uh, we have that intermittent stream. And also what you call incompetent in the, or incomplete emptying. The, when you urinate, you have that feeling that you are, your bladder is not fully emptied after urination. So you find that you have urinated, yes, but you feel there's also some urine. You feel this urine in your blood at the same time. Also, we have uh, as a sign and symptom, we have straining, where effort is required to start uh, this uh, urination and also and maintain the urination. You find the, the, the guys making, it's really straining to make the urine come out with a lot of force. Uh, so we have that one. We also have dribbling, uh, where one after finishing the urine, uh, urination, urination, you find that one now also gets the urine gets to come out without uh, any effort, get to drip out. Even after finishing, you find the finishing you have uh, belted up, and you find out that the urine is also dripping to your to your clothes. Also, as a sign and symptom, we have. Uh, Estancy. Estancy is a delay in starting urination where one uh, goes to, let's say, your, 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 your man, your friend has gone to urinate, but it takes a lot of time to do that process. I remember when we were young kids uh, in our primary school, when you go to the toilet, immediately you start urinating, uh, like immediately. Uh, but uh, find a 70 year old still uh, you can't uh, at the time one takes to urinate to, to, for the urine to come out it is uh, it takes some effort and also uh, 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 so there's that pause long pause before one gets uh, to get a urine flow to begin that's what you call estancy in the, as a sign and symptom for the PPH in this kind of uh, people also, we have bladder pain or discomfort. That's where, where in the abdomen you feel a lot of pain. And normally it's not a very interesting pain because of the uh, urine gets, uh, uh, you get some urine retention there. And in a, an hospital setting, most of the time you will get that uh, a doctor gets to pop a needle through the uh, near the abdomen there to get, so that one gets the urine out. Because sometimes putting that, uh, uh, the, the, there's a, a special string or the catheter which is put through the penis to the, the bladder to get the urine out. At that particular time, you get that uh, uh, one is not able to pass that uh, uh, catheter. When Now, when it refuses, that's when you get that we get to the puncture uh, through the blood, the, your bladder to get that urine out through another route. So because of that pain, sometimes it's a very painful pain. In some studies which I was doing, uh, you find out that it is more painful than labor. So ladies, you can imagine. Uh, I don't know, I've never experienced labor myself, but I've seen people, uh, ladies in labor. 
So I think from the ladies, uh, if a lady tells you, labor is the most painful thing you can ever experience in life. Now in men, with that discomfort, it is more painful than labor at that particular time. So another thing which we have is urinary tract infections or UTIs. And these are recurrent urinary tract infections because of incomplete uh, elimination of urine from the bladder and from the system. So the patient, the, the, the client or the patient is likely to develop uh, UTIs, recurrent UTIs. So especially when the patient comes in the hospital this week, for, uh, you are treating for the UTI. Next week, we have another UTI. So, and also considering the age and uh, the sex of that patient or that client, it's likely the PPH issue because of the uh, incomplete emptying of the of the blood. So these symptoms I've mentioned uh, impact on money's quality of life. So it is important for anyone experiencing these symptoms to seek uh, medical advice and evaluation from healthcare professionals. So uh, while an enlarged prostate uh, is generally non-cancerous, because most of the time you, you people fear uh, the cancer-related things, it, it can affect the urinary function and should be managed properly to leave the symptoms and prevent uh, the complications. So on treatment of the enlarged prostate, there are steps or things which your doctor can do uh, so that to make your life as much comfortable as possible. And number one is what we call uh, watchful waiting. In mild cases or in mild symptoms, which are not bothersome, depending on how the severity of the cell, a doctor may recommend regular monitoring without immediate intervention. So if you go to your doctor and tells you, let us monitor you for a month, for a week, and see what is going to change there, when the symptoms are not very severe. So as part of the management, we do what we call watchful waiting. So very important. Another thing which your doctor or your healthcare provider can introduce you to is lifestyle modification. Simple lifestyle changes can help manage symptoms. This may include limiting caffeine, and the caffeine most of the time is found in soda, especially in African soda, and also coffee. That's what we find in, in, in caffeine. And also what most of the men don't like uh, to talk about it, alcohol intake is also, uh, this is uh, one of the modifications. One reduces or stops taking the alcohol because it can be also be a contributing factor. And also avoiding drinking fluids close to bedtime and practicing the pelvic floor exercises. So you, 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 you find that uh, your doctor can tell you or you are advised because of the, what, what I mentioned about the nocturia or the increase of the frequency of the urination at night. Your doctor can tell you that you reduce the amount of water or of fluids you take before bedtime so that you don't get such kind of uh, problems at, uh, at night. So lifestyle modifications, we talk about uh, uh, limiting caffeine, limiting alcohol, and also uh, closely monitoring the kind of fluids you take before bedtime. You reduce that kind of, uh, of, uh, of, of um, amount of water you take before or fluids before you go to, to bed. And also pelvic floor exercises, there are special exercises which your doctor can introduce you to so that you get to exercise those muscles and make them strong, uh, especially the urethra on the urethra side of it and the we have special muscles which innovate or help the urethra and also the bladder. So your doctor gets you to, or the healthcare provider gets to introduce you to that kind of exercises to make your muscles strong and also help you manage uh, that condition at that particular time. Another option which now becomes inevitable is about medication. When several medication can be prescri uh, prescribed to uh, alleviate the symptoms of the PPH, these include the alpha blockers so that they relax the muscles around the prostate and the bladder, and also the 5 alpha uh, reductase inhibitors so that to shrink the, the, the prostate. So we have special drugs which work on the muscles to relax the muscles of the bladder and also the, the urethra. 
and also we have special uh, drugs which can be reduced, can be introduced, which they call 5 alpha reductase inhibitors, which try to shrink or reduce the size of the prostate. Because the problem here is the increase of the, the prostate, we want as much as uh, to reduce it as much as possible. So depending on what your doctor decides, he can or she can do this at that particular time. Another procedure, another thing which can be done on the management or the treatment of the PPH is minimally inverse procedures. For moderate to severe minimally inverse procedures such as uh, transurethral microwave therapy, that is what we call TUMT, and also transurethral needle ablation or a tuna, that is what you also can be applied. Also, we have laser therapy, which can be performed to reduce prostate size and relieve uh, the symptoms. So, minimal universe procedures, the tuna and the TUMT, the TUMT, that is uh, the transurethral microwave therapy, and also transurethral needle operation can be applied at that particular time to relieve uh, the symptoms as uh, the minimal universe procedures. And last but not least, on the choice of the doctor is to do the surgery, is a, is a part of the management of the prostate uh, hyperplasia. So what it really means, so when other treatments are not effective at the last option for this, the doctor gets to introduce you to surgery. And uh, such a procedures such as the transurethral resection of the prostate well, the, the instrument is passed through the uh, your penis to the ureth to the to the urethra to the bladder through the to the, pro the, the prostate where now get, you get to do what you call transurethral resection the where part of the prostate is cut out so that you get uh, that uh, relief it's called tur turip or T U R P and also. The commonly practiced, especially here in uh, Africa, where we, where uh, I live, is about uh, what you call open prostatectomy, where your abdomen gets opened, so where now you, the prostate is is dissected out or cut out to give you relief of the same. And uh, those are the sure ways of doing away with uh, the prostate. And we have newer techniques like green light laser therapy or uroro lift also may be recommended according to the technology available. And also the choice of treatment uh, depends on various factors, including patient's age, overall health, the size of the prostate, and the severity of the symptoms. It is essential for individuals with PPH or pro, uh, 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 benign prostate hypertrophy to uh, hyperplasia to always discuss with treatment options with the healthcare provider to determine the most uh, suitable uh, approach to their specific case. Regular follow-up uh, are, are also very necessary according to the doctor's or the healthcare provider uh, guide so that uh, you get to approach this thing and adjust to the treatment uh, as needed. So uh, on the prevention part of it, how can you prevent uh, the PPH? Well, you cannot completely prevent the development or the enlargement of the prostate. Uh, I want to talk about with men and also the ladies to understand this one. So the prostate, uh, uh, the benign prostate hypertrophy or PPH is primarily age-related. Age so as you age, especially when you are 45 years and above, you are likely to experience uh, these, uh, uh, these uh, symptoms. So th there are also some lifestyle measures which you can take so that you get to prevent any effects uh, uh, over, over the same. So one thing about this one, and is number one on how to handle this uh, problem, is about the maintaining health uh, uh, lifestyle, eating balanced diet, uh, getting regular exercise, maintaining healthy weight may contribute to the overall prostate health. So maintaining a healthy lifestyle from your weight, manage your weight well, man. So that is what you should work on. And at that particular age of 40 to 60 years, you find most of the men are very busy with their lives. 
and also they are likely to gain a lot of weight at this particular time. So it is very important that uh, you get to manage yourself uh, very well and also get to know how best you can approach this one through the change of your how your weight. Also on the diet, uh, you can find out from your nutritionist to advise you on the best diet to use at that particular time or at this particular age when we should be sensitive on what you eat. And also regular exercise. Exercise is very important at this particular age. So exercise is a very is a constant. So health, uh, maintaining a health lifestyle is very important in men, especially the diet, like I've explained. Uh, maintaining healthy weight through exercise very important so that you get to minimize uh, urinary symptoms. So another thing is limit the caffeine and also alcohol. In fact, uh, most of the doctors advocate that you live about the caffeine thing and also alcohol because of they can increase uh, your symptoms at that particular time. So another thing is stay hydrated. When I say stay hydrated, I mean take uh, uh, take uh, fluids. Uh, in, I remember in in the ad in this video, I mentioned about uh, limiting your fluid intake before bedtime uh, as a recommendation when you have these symptoms. But it is still important to stay adequately hydrated throughout the day. So when I said you limit the water intake during the night. It doesn't mean that during the day you don't take that uh, fluids or those uh, that water. So very important that you stay hydrated. Another thing is about uh, stay uh, empty your bladder regularly when you have that urge to urinate as a prevention me measure so that you don't develop other problem problems. Don't delay urination when you feel the urge, and to try to empty your bladder uh, fully to minimize the irritation. So men, I want to encourage you that when you have that urge to urinate, kindly empty your bladder completely so that you get uh, uh, to, do, to do that. So another thing is avoid, about uh, avoiding medications that worsen the, well, that worsen the symptoms. Uh, some medications such as decongestants or antihistamines. Uh, here in Africa, we have things like uh, Periton, we have uh, some syrups of decongestants, what you call decongestants. They can bring a lot of problems with your PPH symptoms. So discuss your medication with your healthcare provider. And then when you start any medication, if you are in follow-up with your uh, urologist, that's people who follow people with these process problems, uh, kindly, or your healthcare provider, let the, the healthcare, your healthcare provider know the other medications which you are on, it's very important for you and also to take care of your health. Also, be mindful of over-the-counter cold and allergy remedies. There are drugs, especially in Africa, we don't have very much controls on over-the-counter drugs. Uh, and especially this season now, here in Africa, we are experiencing a lot of rains here. It's a cold season here in Africa. So that's when you get a lot of uh, uh, these, uh, uh, some medication over-the-counter. So discuss with your healthcare provider uh, about your concerns on those kind of medications uh, so that you get uh, to know because some products contain ingredients that can affect urinary symptoms. So also read the labels on those drugs and consult with the healthcare provi providers if needed. Very important men, like I said, when you are 40 to and above years, kindly see your healthcare provider for regular checkups. So regular check checkup is a prevention a prevention me me measure also, which can help very uh, very well. So I recommend, or it is recommended that annual checkups with your healthcare provider can help monitor your prostate health and the catch up issues early. So uh, guys, follow up with your healthcare provider annually. I know uh, there are people who have, uh, especially the working class, they have covers. Uh, they have insurances which allow them to go for health checkup. Uh, take advantage of that uh, package, go for annual checkup. Especially men go for that, those uh, uh, prostate uh, checkups so that you get uh, to enjoy, also to get to enjoy those services as you, uh, so that you, you, you do what we call aging restfully with your prostate. Also, uh, last but, but not least, know your family history. 
because uh, like any other, most of the diseases, when you talk about uh, disease etiology, uh, causes of uh, diseases and also conditions, they run in the family. Know your, your family history, if your father, your un uncles, your grand, uh, grandfathers had this problem and be prepared as much as possible to prevent these secondary things to you. So it is important to inform your healthcare providers that you, be, uh, that you had your father or your grandfather having the same complaints or the same problems so that you get uh, uh, the best treatment and uh, to help also your healthcare provider know that you are, you are at risk of developing uh, such kind of uh, a problem at that uh, particular time. So we have some complications of PPH or benign prostate hyperplasia. Number one is about uh, acute urinary retention, where one now is a way one develops sudden and a painful inability to urinate, what we call acute urinary retention. It re often requires immediate medical intervention when one experiences those pains, such as catheterization, where we introduce the catheter to the through the urethra to the bladder so that you get a urine out because now one is not able to void uh, directly because of uh, other because of uh, to, because of these the severe symptoms one is not able to urinate so we introduce a catheter because of acute urinary distension. Another complication which can come up is about clinical uh, or clinical chronic kidney problems where severe PPH can lead to urinary tract obstructions where now can cause the damage to the kidneys over time due to the backup of urine. The thing is when the blood, the, the body after the systems have uh, washed themselves, you get urine as a waste product in the bladder. So if the urine is not able to come out from the bladder, it uh, starts to seep back to the kidneys. And when they go back to the kidney, you get a lot of problems. So uh, that's why we want to approach this problem when the symptoms are at a manageable uh, space, where now if it is a catheter to be introduced, to be introduced at that particular time, if it is the medication, uh, it can be introduced at that particular time. But the problem is here in Africa, most of the time you get that uh, the men especially, we go for that uh, service when it is too late, when we have had kidney problems now. And when we have now kidney problem, you know kidneys, uh, play a very important role in our body, including getting out the toxins from the, from, the, from the system. Now, when you get them failing, now you get, that's where now you get, you, you are getting to what you call uh, dialysis. Uh, now, I will get a very strong medication to treat your kidneys. And when even the kidneys fail, now you get, a, it's a very expensive affair, and also it can cost you your life. So, as a complication, kidney uh, problems come up because of the sipping pack of the urine from the bladder and also because of the severe symptoms over, over the same. Also, we have what you call bladder stones. Urinary retention and any complete blood emptying can result in formation of bladder stones. Because of the consolidation of the urine in the bladder for a long time or they stay in a very long time, uh, because of the stillness of that urine in that place for a long time, uh, you find out that we have uh, bladder stones and normally they are very painful and we don't want stones in that in the bladder because it can lead to very detrimental problems at that particular time. So bladder stones becomes a complication of uh, the PPH which is poorly managed at that particular time. Urinary tract infections, I've talked about uh, recurrent uh, urinary tract infection. Because of incomplete uh, uh, emptying of the bladder, uh, there, there's a high risk of uh, UTIs or urinary tract infection, which becomes very recurrent and becomes uh, severe. So you get that now even pus is formed in the urethra, in the bladder, and also get to infect also the kidneys, uh, and it's not a very interesting thing at that particular time. So bladder damage, uh, obviously, if you have a lot of infections, if you have a lot of consolidation in the bladder, you get that the bladder is damaged because we are putting a lot of pressure on it with infections and also the urine is not getting out properly. So we get a problem there of bladder damage. 
Also, we have what you call immaturia or urine in blood. So may occur due to irritation or damage of the urinary tract because of where urine passes. Now we have a big problem there. So we have blood coming out because of either infections or injury, the bladder and the urinary tract uh, system. Also, what you can have there is also what you call lower tract, uh, lower urinary tract symptoms or LUT, LUTS. So severe PPH can cause a significant uh, impact on personal quality of life, causing persistent uh, lower uh, abdominal pain. Uh, symptoms which can be uh, uh, that interfere with the daily activity. This is where you find a patient complains of the lower pain, abdominal pains, which can be on the abdomen, can go to the back and other places, and that, that they can they can be very uncomfortable at that particular time for for the patients. So uh, where we have lower urinary tract symptoms, so if the patient complains of. Uh, is not the the legs are not strong the patient is not able to support himself the back has a lot of pain and other other problems so guys uh, in conclusion an enlarged prostate or being uh, benign prostate type uh, hyperplasia is a common condition that primarily affects aging men while it cannot be completely be prevented their lifestyle measures are like i've mentioned from above that can help uh, manage symptoms and reduce the risk of complication. These include maintaining health lifestyle, staying hydrated, and avoiding certain medications. If you experience uh, the symptoms of PPH, such as uh, urinary difficulties, it is crucial to seek medical advice because uh, uh, PPH uh, can, uh, can reduce, uh, because by this uh, seeking, health seeking behavior, you are likely to reduce the risk of complication. So also things like maintaining a healthy lifestyle, that's avoiding alcohol and caffeine, also staying hydrated during the day, uh, and also that's taking a lot of fluids during the day, and also avoiding certain medications that we talked about over the counter medications can also be a very important thing which one can practice. If you experience symptoms of BPH such as uh, the urinary difficulties, kindly seek uh, medical advice because BPH can lead to complications like acute kidney uh, uh, problems, uh, acute urinary retention and the urinary tract infection if left untreated and it becomes uh, very severe and makes your life very difficult and uh, not uh, uh, bearable. So, but fortunately, I want to give you the good news that there are various treatment options available, ranging from the lifestyle modifications and the medic medications to minimally invasive procedures and uh, also, last but not least, the surgeries which can be done. The choice of treatment depends on the severity of symptoms and also uh, uh, it is individual it is from one individual to another one. Regular checkups, I've said about annual checkups, for, especially for us men, uh, to see your, your healthcare provider, it's very important to check the health of your, of your prostate. So kindly communicate with your healthcare provider and also to essentially monitor and manage the PPH effectively. Ensure a better quality of life for those affected uh, by this kind of uh, condition. Especially that's why I said about the ladies, you need to support if it's your partner. If you have a partner, ensure that, that that partner goes for a checkup, for yearly checkup. I know men have poor, especially in Africa, we have very poor healthy seeking behavior, but it's very important that you go for that checkup, it's also for your own good, so that you go for a checkup. Guys, I want to talk about uh, something on this uh, PPH thing. You find that here in Africa, we have uh, other alternative medicine people who say they can treat, uh, to, who can treat the prostate. But I want to differ categorically because as you found, as we have found out, PPH is caused by uh, BPH is most of the time age related, and there is no way you can stop one from aging. So because of the aging factor in the human body, we have the changes which take place in the in the prostate. And the proper way of doing this is through the conventional medicine and checking on your prostate every time so that uh, uh, you get you get to get evaluated and checked 
so that you find out where the problem is. But over the over and over, you find out that, especially in African villages, even in towns, you find people selling drugs, which they say they can treat your your prostate. Men having a prostate is not a problem, but the increase and also changes which take place in the prostate is the problem. And the only person who can do that, or the only expertise who can do that, is through the studies which can be done on your your current prostate. Because the, your problem with the, your prostate is not my problem. Even if we are the same age, this problem differ in a different way. So individually see your, your healthcare provider to take appropriate measures and also take proper me measurements. Like they can do a test on you. They can do a picture on you. They can do an ultrasound on you. They can do, uh, there's what you call, uh, there's a, they check on a prostate hormone. Uh, they, they check a PPH hormone and also find out if uh, these hormones for the prostate are very high to take appropriate actions because the management is very clear. When the, <clears throat> when the, the factor for the prostate is very high and also when the enlargement, the size of the, 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 the prostate is high, to, make, to help the healthcare provider make a decision. So most of the men here, you get that after those alternative medicine, uh, in quotes, in the, in the, from the quacks, I can call them, they take those medicines for a long time. And when now the patient gets pro to, pro to come to the hospital, you get that the patient has developed also the cancers and also maybe as I had now urethro problems, kidney problems at some point, because some of those uh, medicines given to those people are very toxic. They have now brought about the kidney problems. The, because of the invasiveness of those, uh, some of those crazy and crude uh, procedures done on those patients, the patient develops a lot of complications. And now when the patient presents themselves or they are brought to the hospital setting, they have a lot of challenges which you cannot help at that particular time. So it is my plea that especially men here in Africa and also wherever you are in your country, uh, kindly uh, go to the conventional way of uh, treatment. The, your doctor, your urologist, your healthcare provider can guide you appropriately with evidence-based things so that you get uh, proper treatment. And I know the alternative kind of treatments are very expensive. They really take a lot of funds from that particular, uh, those particular patients. And now when they come to the hospital, there's nothing major with the healthcare providers. Kindly guys, I want to wish you a, a prostate health thing uh, and also uh, that you get to seek uh, the health care which is really important for you at that particular time. And also, ladies have a role to play in this, especially part partners, that's wives, lovers for these guys. Uh, support these guys also because sometimes when a man finds himself that he cannot, uh, is thinking urine because of the leaking and also the symptoms of the PPH, they need your support and also understanding because sometimes uh, in some places, I'm told a lady can move from the bedroom where they used to share with the partner to another room because the urine is smelling on the blankets and also uh, the sheets of this uh, uh, this bed where the man is sleeping. Kindly understand them and also ensure they have that hygiene. And men also, you need to be very bold and share with your partner your problem and also go uh, early for treatment because uh, we have these avenues of helping uh, you in uh, the hospital setting. And uh, depending on your problem, uh, don't say that my brother was treated this way, so use this medication, that's what I will use also and be well. Kindly go to your doctor, takes the measurements for you, get, uh, sends you to the lab, takes a good ultrasound on you to find the prostate. Then you, when you have those results, you discuss directly uh, with, your, with your doctor to determine the outcome and also how you are going to handle this one. Because as we found out, when you handle these symptoms early in your life or when they, they have started, it is very easy also to manage your life and also, also it makes work easier for your partner and also, also your family. And when it comes to your, to your sickness, it affects your wife, it affects your children, it affects your grandchildren, and also it affects also the quality of your life. Nobody says, especially when you are 40, 50, you should be suffering, and when we have this kind of success here in Africa. Kindly, guys, uh, I want you to think about that old person, that uh, 
your brother, that's uh, your your father, that's your grandfather who has this problem, and also present them to the healthcare providers to guide them accordingly because we have these services. And the BPH is a very common thing, and, it's some, and most of the time, like we've, we've said about it, is really unavoidable. Guys, welcome to our channel. The channel is Future Talks. Kindly, if you have not subscribed, I want to encourage you to subscribe to our channel and also share it widely, DM, and also uh, support us. And where you think we can do better, kindly uh, give your input so that we get uh, this channel to another level. Guys, welcome, and also want to welcome you to our next videos. Peace.